Hello, my name is April and I'm the Head of Product for Developer Productivity and Platforms at REA Group. And today I want to talk about scaling a product management function in platform engineering teams. We only have 15 minutes together, so let's get to it. Today, I'll be walking through what product's role is in a platform engineering team, the challenges that can be faced attempting to scale a product function in platform engineering, as well as some different methods for sustainably scaling product. Then we'll round it out today by walking through the benefits of product in a platform engineering team. Let's get started. Platform engineering is a developer and system engineer dominated arena, and this is mainly in part due to its roots as a DevOps function. DevOps came about around 2009 and was primarily made up of system engineers to help remove the operational burden of running production software from feature delivery teams. Of course, that particular model reached a ceiling and with the sophistication of developer operations comes the opportunity to platformize capabilities to streamline the entire process for everyone. So from there, the DevOps team have heard about platform engineering and began incorporating product thinking to build out a platform that increases their impact and further improves developer productivity. The platform begins gaining traction, which is really exciting, but the more people that want the things and the more capabilities to be built and the system engineers begin spending more time doing stakeholder management, user story prioritization, and understanding the problem spaces, so suddenly the building of the platform has come to a complete halt. And it's at this point that the platform engineers realize that they need to share the load because they can't do it all. And that's where product management gets hired to come in and help champion the product work and keep the product mindset alive. It's really, really rare for a platform engineering team to start out with a product manager. Almost always product management is coming in to a semi-made platform. So in this way, many platform engineering teams, or at least the way that I like to think about them, are like mini startups within organizations. They have to operate really, really lean until they prove their value and then they get to scale. But what happens once we introduce a new function to this mix to solve other problems? Well, more problems can arise. Let's chat about some of the challenges that can come with attempting to scale a product function in a platform engineering team. When I began attempting to scale out our platform engineering team at REA with product, I came up with three main obstacles budget, supply, and knowledge. Most platform engineering teams are chronically underfunded. There's most likely already resourcing constraints within the system engineering space. And it was probably through some desperate begging that it was even allowed for a platform product manager to be hired in the first place. Considering the costs of product management, this can be a major obstacle with obtaining a product manager that has the right skill set to be effective in a platform engineering team. And this leads into the second supply or the second major obstacle, which is supply. Product managers are a dime a dozen. That's the truth of it. But finding a product manager that's even remotely interested in being a platform product manager is extremely difficult. For example, the platform engineering Slack community is approximately full of 20... For example, the platform engineering Slack community has approximately 20,000 people in it, and yet there are only 1,500 people in the product management channel. That's less than 10% of the community. And while, look, we can't say that this is an accurate representation of the industry as a whole, it does paint a very telling story of the kinds of supply issues that can be faced when trying to stand up a product function in platform engineering. And finally, this leads into knowledge. Knowledge is the third horseman of product challenges in platform engineering. And more often than not, it's a product of our budget and supply obstacles. Because due to budget constraints, a senior person with the right expertise is often foregone for an associate or mid-level that is still finding their feet. And because of the supply issues, the entry level for that associate or mid-level has been dropped even further which means acquiring a platform product manager with the right level of expertise to be effective on a platform engineering team can almost seem like asking for a unicorn. These are some pretty major challenges, but I and many other platform product managers are proof that the impossible can be achieved. So once we have hired our first single product manager or first few product managers, how do we scale this function once it starts to really drive impact? Let's talk about that now. One of the first ways here at REA that we attempted to scale product was by aligning product managers to the different parts of the DevOps cycle. 
And the main reason for this was the existing setup of our DevOps capability. It wasn't cohesive, and while it made up of while it was made up of what could be considered an internal developer platform, as in we had all the ingredients of an internal developer platform, it was so distributed that there wasn't much opportunity for overlap. And this showed this showed in the challenges that we faced in product. Having product aligned to the different segments of the DevOps cycle was proving too detailed too quickly. It was an inefficient use of resource and led to a lack of a cohesive strategy. So the teams became too siloed and too involved in their own areas to drive forward with a shared goal. And so while this might work in a company that's flush with cash, for most companies, it will prove too low level and inefficient for both resource and capability that was going to actually drive real productivity and organizational growth and sophistication. So from the DevOps cycle, we scaled up into aligning product to capability. We aligned ourselves according to specific capability that we believed would drive the most productivity and efficiency gains orchestrating cloud infrastructure and networking, building a subset of golden paths to production for deployment, accelerating developer productivity with templates and task automation. And then we also began an audit of how well we were actually operating production software with an operations function. This was a much higher level view for the product managers. And while this did drive better engagement and better alignment because conversations were happening at the higher level than the lower level of the DevOps cycle, it still really wasn't lending into a cohesive strategy and there also wasn't any clear career progression or true areas of ownership for product. It felt like a bit of an interim solution. We could do better and so we did. I'm sure you are all familiar with this blueprint by now. The internal developer platform blueprint helped highlight specific experience areas that we could align product to and subsequently scale as our impact grew. This blueprint helped highlight the cross-functional nature of a platform engineering team with product management included. Whilst a product manager may be responsible for a specific experience, such as the developer control plane or the resource plane, the interdependency and overlap means platform product managers must maintain close contact and collaboration at all times. It's all interconnected and one thing cannot exist without the other. And this was one of the challenges that we were experiencing when we were aligned to the DevOps cycle. In the DevOps cycle, everything appeared too clear cut. And so product managers and their teams were operating in silos. And this blueprint, even though it might be the same thing, is actually helping to break it down in a much more easy and consumable format. With the added element of the capabilities contained within, this internal developer platform blueprint has also provided a scaling blueprint for product. This makes it a much easier sell for potential platform product managers who are interested in understanding how their remit or their space can grow as their experience grows. We are still in the early days of implementing this blueprint, but so far it's proven really useful in helping us assemble ourselves and begin delivering on a strategy that's shared, cohesive and aligned. And that's going to actually help us drive even more efficiency for REA's product teams. Let's talk about the career progression for product management. In this model, the career progression for product management becomes really clear when you start to align it to an industry standard product management lens against this blueprint. What I mean by this is you can have a senior PM own the entire internal developer platform. And as you grow with impact, you, you can start to hire and assign product managers to the different planes. And then when you grow even more, you can assign associate product managers to the different capabilities within the planes. This type of model is actually very much in line with industry standard product management, where a senior product manager owns a large chunk, a mid-level product manager owns a portion, and then an associate product manager has a segment to own and drive. You won't be immediately starting out with capability within all these areas, but as you grow and develop the internal developer platform and the value is realized, you'll be able to sustainably scale your product management function according to this model. But here's the catch. Your first hire needs to be the senior product manager. Without that, you really run the risk of the time to value for the platform being increased or the experience of the platform being suboptimal. Both of these things can really, really damage the platform engineering team's brand and should be avoided at all costs. 
Let's round out today by talking about the benefits of product in platform engineering. While platform engineering is a very developer and engineering dominated space, the value product management can bring to the function cannot be understated. It is huge. There are certainly challenges with it, but as platform engineering becomes more mainstream and the movement gains more traction, I really do see this becoming a hotspot for those product managers that want a bit more of a technical edge and involvement. Proper product management can really drive huge value props across an organization's platform and engineering function and help ensure all the users of a platform are considered, the correct features and capabilities are being prioritized for maximum impact. And of course, working in partnership with the platform engineers helps to ensure that the best of their technical expertise is blended with the best of product thinking to drive a platform strategy that's actually going to help many organizations succeed. Utilizing a metric-driven, user-oriented approach to building platforms can help quantify the value of the platform and ensure the right people are understanding the right things. I hope you enjoyed my talk today. If you'd like to connect, you can find me on LinkedIn or I do occasionally post Medium articles. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of PlatformCon. Bye.